Hi, welcome to another video. Today I'm looking at this small graphic display. Give you an idea of the size for our American friends, a one cent piece. And I found that out on the road actually, but and here's a one pound coin. So pretty small, 128 pixels long by 64 deep. This one's black and yellow as you'll see. I'll mind these coins out of the way. Turn it on. Via scrolling text, small text, getting progressively bigger. These are 60 pixels tall. And this counts up to 9 very quickly, with just a couple of millisecond delay between each frame. Down again, vertical scrolling a box, a counter, there's more info on a counter later and then that's a simple GIF which is actually 29 pictures long. Uh, I've taken some of the frames out just to fit in this uh, pic microcontroller I'm using today. It's only got 32 kilobytes of ROM so I had to remove some of the frames to get the larger numbers in. But that egg time is still showing something like 17 static pictures. These pictures are obviously big in the memory or these numbers. Yeah the counters a real issue. As yeah that egg time about 17 frames. So I downloaded a microelectronica sample. They've got one of these on a clickboard. Uh, I didn't have the clickboard as I say I've got this from Farnell. But I thought I'll, I'll just see if, see what their sample software is like. Now their ethos is, you know, you buy a clickboard, plug it in, and develop something, uh, and get it to market quickly. But their sample software for these displays would not work on my compiler, and then I didn't see any function to actually write text. It's only to show pictures. So you'll see on my C file. I've had to spell out exactly when you're counting, when this is counting, I've had to spell out where the numbers go and if the number is say like for example 23, put the 2 here and a 3 there uh, and it counts up to 30 so then put a 3 here and then a, a 0 here, uh, I've had to spell out where every single character goes. So before I forget, this is the Midas website, here's the screen part number, here's the PDF for the display, let me uh, open it, I'll just show you something. Just the uh, PDF for the display, so here's how I connected the display initially, serial data, serial clock, I'm using 3 wire, or was using 3 wire SPI. Number three is confusing, see I2C mode, this pin acts as SAO for slave address selection. Uh, and when three wire serial interface is selected, this pin must be connected to VSS. So I don't understand that, but I connected it to ground. This is a reset, chip select, you should be familiar with these. Uh, three volts or 5 volts, you can use either or, and then ground. So serial data, serial clock, but then it speaks about the pins on the chip here. I'm trying to point at the screen and as usual uh, you, you can't see my finger. When the serial interface mode is selected, D0 will be the serial clock input, SCLK, and D1 will be the serial data input. Uh, when I2C mode is selected, D2, D1 should be either tied together and serve as SDA out or SDA in. Uh, any application D0 is a serial clock input, SCL. So I swapped these two around when I got nothing, it wasn't working. Uh, and then thought, no, that only sets to confuse you. I shouldn't mention the interface, which is, I believe, on the... That, that flat flex cable on the display, it must be minute, really tiny because you can't see it. Anyway, so that so pin one is the serial data, two is the serial clock, three I'll show you in the drawing. This one's really important, you can't tie it to VSS, not unless you're running the display 
off a F FPGA and you can program your ninth clock pulse when you're sending data to the display, you know, like pictures or fonts, you need this wire for SPI. Yeah, obviously reset chip select. So that's the hassle I had with the PDF. Right, here's my wiring diagram. So serial data, serial clock, SAO, gonna go into in a minute, reset, chip select, uh, three volt or five volt and then ground. There's the screen data, 128 long, 64 deep. Uh, page 23 of the data sheet for pages pick. So if I pull up the data sheet. So this is the screen, but horizontally, the screen is broken up into eight pages. So naught's a number, naught's a seven, eight pages. And it's important, I'll go into it later, each column, so the first column of 128 columns, but it's naught to 127. So each column is written in page address mode from the bottom of each page upwards. So if you, I'll show you in the code later. So when I'm talking about page address, page addressing, this is what I'm talking about. Similar to many other displays. So on my little pick breakout board, uh, I've got, uh, so the clock RC3 and the data on RC5. That would be the same on all 28 pin picks. If you're using a different pick, you can use um, an 886, which is also 28 pin or available in 28 pin. And those pins are in the same place. I forget what pick I'm using. I'll get my compiler up. Um, project, edit project. So I'm currently using the PIC 18F258. And as I said earlier, it's got 32 kilobytes of flash, or like read-only memory. And it's just about big enough to squeeze all those large fonts and the egg timer in. Behind you, you see some of the frames for the egg timer. It was actually 27. If I scroll down while I'm on there, Scroll back out. Oh, there's an egg. Yeah, so I was going to make an egg timer, but there's not enough room in the memory. I'll talk on the memory, I'll show you the memory in a minute. So there's a 27th frame. Each frame is 720 bytes long. And so for the demonstration you saw on the uh, early part of the video, this is the RAM usage. I'm down to 14% left. But what's important, ROM usage. 6% or 0.6% of that 32, just over 32 kilobytes of flash memory ROM. And a little tip, so I had no ROM left but stacks of the memory, if I go back up to RAM, so how much have we got? 1515 bytes. This was like nearly empty. So what I did, instead of making I can get rid of that. These are constant code. So these are stored in the ROM. But I had, I was running out of ROM and I had loads of RAM left. So what I did, this is the large A and the large C, A1 and C1. This is the regular font, the small writing you saw. It's all there if you want it. But these are the big numbers, so big zero big one, big two, and you'll see there, uh, if I scroll down, 536 bytes in each large number. Well, but you see here, so the constant on so short, so this is written to the flash memory, but you see here, I changed this big four and big five. I don't know why I picked those, but I just did. You see the unsigned so short, so these two, big numbers, four and five, are stored in RAM, not the ROM. And then all the rest are back in uh, constant, so they're obviously written to the read-only memory, program memory. So yeah, if, you, if you're running out of ROM and you've got some RAM left, change it from a constant to 
for just an unsigned short and that will be stored in the RAM and not the ROM. But yeah, to reiterate, 32 kilobytes, running out of RAM and I've got bugger all ROM left. So before I forget that egg timer, go into Google, search there, look, top of the list, animated icons, icons 8. I think it's this iOS glyph. Some are free and some are not. Let's just scroll down. Free. I'm sure the other week all these were free. There's a gear one. I saw a YouTube one earlier. There's a finger. I was looking for a middle finger but couldn't find one. Someone on the skateboard. Hand scissors. That's good if you're a Mighty Car Mods fan. That'd work. That's at Facebook. There's a YouTube one down here. I'll let YouTube free. So you click on this, download the GIF, and then go back to Google. You then want to convert your GIF to a string of pictures. So convert GIF to JPEG. This top one here, easygif.com. So it's online. You choose your file. Let's pick one. Here's a YouTube one I downloaded earlier. So upload that. Convert to JPEG. And then this is that YouTube GIF converted to a string of pictures. And you just download them. Uh, store them all in your computer, put them into the picture editor, which, see if I can quickly find it. Actually, no, it's in the compiler, isn't it? The tools, GLCD bitmap editor. But there's one of the, the egg timers already there, so you load your bitmap, put it in there, copy the file to the clipboard. And then enter it here. So yeah, using the tools here. It's got to be 128 by 64 as monochrome, so you can get Windows Paint to do that for you. So this is Microelectronica's Micro C Pro for Pick. I've got the 32 as well. If I go to library, you get all the regular functions that you'll be familiar with. Here's the OLED click I downloaded. Now if I click on display picture, was it display picture? Yeah, so OLED. The, these are the functions for the OLED click. So display picture, and this is it. It's look, OLED display picture. Uh, so it's a constant, was it eight bits? Uh, it just displays a picture and it's initialising the OLED display. Scroll left, scroll right. But I saw nothing about text or numbers. Nothing. And then they say about, you know, get something to mark it quickly. Well, what's this HAL SPI? Where the hell has HAL come from? How are you meant to understand that? Uh, and then it's I2C here, chip select, PWM, God knows. So that's the SPI interface. So the functions, HAL, SPI map, T HAL. Uh, uh, what? SPI write, SPI read. We can't read this data, this, this module on a serial interface. You can only do that with a parallel interface, or certainly with a Midas screen. I, I don't get it. I, I do not understand any of this. It's been written in a foreign language. SPI read, so you can't read the display via, via an SPI interface. That's what the manual says from Midas. You can only read it with a parallel interface. But I see nothing about like writing characters. It's a set column, send data, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I was very disappointed and it didn't compile. 
what the specific chips. So this is how you communicate. Get rid of that. Rubbish. You communicate via SPI. So this is initialising the display. Have a look at the data sheet. This charge pump, for example, that's actually a voltage inverter and some of the screen runs at 7.5 volts even though you're, you're running on 3 or 5 there's a little charge pump that gives you 7.5 volts for the uh, specific function on the OLED display and in contrast I've put a little note here, this flips it upside down pre-charge um, this inverts the, the uh, display normal display Anyway, it's all in the C file, so have a have a browse, but you communicate via SPI. So up the top here, so my PIC didn't have an internal oscillator, which is shame because the breakout board didn't have room for a crystal, so I had to bodge a crystal on the pins. This is the SPI in it, so initialization. So the PIC is running at 10 megs, and I'm dividing the was dividing the clock by four, so the SPI is running at three and a half megs, roughly three and a half megs compared to 400 kilohertz I2C. So this is was at that speed, it's eight and a half times or eight and a quarter times faster than I2C, uh, and it's a very fast display. So this initializes the display by SPI right. You can see SPI right. Now I've got little functions up the top and I can't go into all the details because I'll be here all night and half of you are going to be bored already. See this set display. So this naught or one, I'm born to get on the screen, naught or one sets it for horizontal or vertical scanning and page address mode or not. And then it's obviously column naught to 127. This is starting at page 1 to page 2, not page 0 at the top of the screen, one page down and then another page down. So my little font here, from M for Manders, capital M, and a font right at the top, that's each character is 8 pixels tall and it's spanning page 1 to page 2, so just one page. So capital M, A, Manders, blah blah blah, then there's a John B. Just show you a bit here in binary. What I wanted to get through to you, I see the quick note here. Oh yeah, about the page and vertical, and vertical and horizontal scanning. There's a bit down here. Well, this is it. The GLCD font creator, excellent, excellent tool from Microelectronica. Let me pull this one up. Uh, Tacoma 11 by 16. Well, so once you understand how this character is drawn, I had to uh, stop the camera and look back. So this is writing in number three, so this is number two. I have to go and double check. I lost lost myself. So open Microelectronica's GLCD font creator. Clever tool, no doubt. Right, new font. Import an existing font. Tacoma, regular. And what was it? It was 11 by 16. So this is tall, pixels tall here. So 16 tall. Okay. And I would just want numbers. So the numbers in ASCII. So it's 49, which includes a zero, to 57 in ASCII. 57 removes all the common empty rows at the top and bottom etc. Okay, so I got lost earlier. I was on the number one when that first character I'm drawing in binary is a number two. So if I pull this in a bit, move this over here. Once you understand this, the penny will drop, hopefully. Right, except I'm lost, forgot what I was doing. Right, so this, as I said in the beginning, the display 
scans from the bottom of each page to the top of each page in the particular mode I'm using goes down to the next page and so this page so one two three four five six seven eight pixels is here this is the first page and that's the second page so forget the fact I've just put a, a dot in there this is where the scanning starts so we go so we've got a nothing nothing so one two three four five five nothings come over to here let me move that closer five nothings one two three four five then we've got two pixels so that's a one and a one and a nothing so that's definitely a number two and that's the first column of the first page then this is the second page of the first column so you've got one 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 and look here we've got a one 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 then one two three four five zeros one 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 two three four five zeros don't forget I put that in so that's the first page here and second page below so once we do this page upwards then this page upwards next page so we've got one two three four five six zeros which you can see there six zeros these are all eight bits that's one byte so six zeros two ones one two three four five six and two ones then down the bottom you can see here we've got four ones and one two three four empty spaces four ones four empty spaces so that's first column first page and second page first, uh, is that oh, I'm lost now second column is the second page and then the last column is actually all blanks so if I get rid of that get rid of that get rid of that that's how this font creator is creating the fonts and that's how the display is displaying them bit by bit so once you get your uh, binary number if you're creating your own font copy and as I've shown you a hundred times before or unless you haven't seen my other videos go to programmer go to binary you can paste this straight here look paste so look, that number there, whichever one I just copied, would be a hexadecimal 7C. But, so that's how the fonts are drawn. Yeah, so this is the large, well, sorry, this, the larger letter, uh, larger number 2, then the larger number 3. But, so the only other caveat with this font creator if I show you, um, I'll export it. File, export, click on micro C, there's basic Pascal on C, copy to clipboard, except I want, let's go for number two, uh, yes, I want 50. Ah, oh, it's just failed. Continue, I'll leave that there. 4950 50 is that, is that giving me right that's giving me one character in fact if I go back to this number two so what's number two yeah oh, it is number 50 so this is hexadecimal six so pull up the calculator again hexadecimal six hex six binary so we go 110 that's that get rid of that for a minute oh, close close 0110 for the first character 0110 and it's not put all the other blanks in for the 
higher nibble, you could call that. But notice if I go export again, export number two. No, it's gone back. Fifty. Reduce. I'm reducing this here, so it just gives us that first character. So we've got 06, that's the first line we want. See this, oh, well, well, well micro C, not Pascal. And it's now changed again, 50. See this is 0A, so copy the clipboard. Close, close. Don't want to save the changes. If I just paste this here, paste. Well, we should have an even number of characters, but this first character here, I know from experience on the TFTs, the colour TFTs, that font creator puts a character here, and I think on the colour displays 800 by 480, puts three characters, and the compiler recognises those characters. And for example, I forget the TFT with all the fancy knobs and everything, not the regular picks, it's for one of the other families, They've got more functions than the regular picks. I tried to paint one of their pictures on a TFT. It wouldn't draw. And I sussed out in the end. A character up here changes. Uh, there's a specific character for a specific fam family of displays. And it then gives you the length and the width. Well, on this, for the monochrome graphic displays, you've got that 0x0a. Well, this, you don't need because we're writing that string directly. So that would be a number two. So I'm writing it all individually, but then for the number three, I just call that, like for example, three, count how many bits are in there, all those character two, count how many bits are in there, and then for character 3, like SPI write 3, uh, and then I'm incrementing each character like by 22 times, so there's 22, 22 bits there, presumably. So that's what's happening. That's what's happening with the, uh, the 3, and then the 6, I believe, and then all the big numbers. Uh, you can see it's a big R, uh, yeah, big 8. Where's the big nine? Yeah, big nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, naught, and it counts back up again. It's running the normal SPI. SPI write, like the big eight. But talking of data, this write data, very quickly, if my picture will come back up. So this SA0, I'm sure I've got a note here. I've got a, I've got a, read this out because it's the truth and it really annoyed me this connection took me three days to figure out you remember the data she said tight as the ground or VSS if you're using 3 wire SPI well I did that and I could not get anything on that display just garbage from it being turned on and off it took me three days to figure out see the data sheet no BS three days what the yeah uh, this is the right data, and I've got it tied to RB1. Uh, it's the right data pin of the DC bit. And the DC bit is, are you writing data to the chip, or are you writing a command to the chip? Are you telling it what column or what address you want to start at, which is a, is a command, or if you want to invert the display, there's a command. If you want to turn it on and off, there's a command, scroll, command. If you want to write some numbers, fonts, pictures, that's data. Now the, <coughs> the data sheet goes into more details, but 3 wire SPI, you need a ninth clock pulse to enter the data. If you haven't got a fill programmable gauge array or some clever compiler to give you a ninth clock pulse, you need this SA0 as your fourth SPI wire. So when you run a write to the display, you, I think, I oh, forget, do you ground this pin? 
I've forgotten now, I've done it so many times. So let's go back to here. So write data. So look, well, if we concentrate on this eight. So we're setting the display. Right, then look, write data is one. Then for 536 bytes, we're writing at big eight, which is above, which you've already seen. Then once we've written that data, the write data off. Oh, this is accounting quickly, like a five millisecond delay. And so the write data is off, five millisecond delay. Then we're setting the display in the same place for the next character, which is a big nine. Oh, and that's got two and a, a two and a half second delay. But you have to write the data. Uh, turn it on to write data, turn it off to stop the data. If you write the data and set the display, you would just get junk on the screen. So that write data is really important. And it took me three days to figure it out. I thought I didn't have a fourth control wire. So I went back to the data sheet, figured, have they got it wrong? And they have. And I'm a bit disappointed that today on their website, you've just seen it, it's not been rectified. So that SA0, if you use an SPI, you need that to write data and get pictures or fonts into the display. A little note down here, writing column pages or writing data, memory, pictures, fonts. So this is the part number, last time I'm looking at this picture. This part number for the display I've got, it was from Farnell, just over £10 or so plus the VAT. Uh, it's a graphic display, 3 or 4 volts, yellow on black, yeah, roughly a tanner. Uh, so I'm pleased with it, now I've got it going, but it, yeah, it took me three days to get something on it. Right, the video's already 33 minutes long, and I've still glossed over a lot, but I need to go into a small bit more detail, otherwise none of this will make sense. So, some of the functions. Here's the uh, scroll horizontal, for example. And I've put long names in here, so that when you type them in down the bottom, it prompts you. Uh, this is a function just to scroll one direction. And you can see there, it's looking, are you typing a left or a right? Uh, and then it just sets the columns and pages up. That's a vertical scroll, that's a scroll stop. Uh, this is obviously all done in a regular compiler for you. You don't have to worry about any of this. But writing to a TFT, you don't have to write every individual bit. Uh, or send 8 or 16 bits of data to a colour TFT. It's all done in the compiler. But when your compiler doesn't cater for the display, you have to write it all out. And as for the example over here, didn't understand any of it. So I gave up, wrote my own. Uh, that's a scroll. This is the set display. So it's essentially writing the column start, column end, page, start, page, end. Uh, and it gives you a hint when you type something in. Um, this is clear screen. So to clear the screen, you have to reset the display. Uh, draw image, so this is again setting the start column, end column, and whether it's writing vertically or uh, scanning vertically, horizontally, page scanning, all that sort of stuff. Um, right char, this is the long winded bit. So, how do you write without a language? How do you write numbers without a language? Well, as far as this display goes this compiler does not understand it. So if you want to put a one somewhere, it doesn't know what to do. So you have to tell it what a one is. So this is a blank. So if the number is less than, less than or equal to nine, it writes a blank in the tens position. <laughs> That's if there's you know, been a 10 or an 11. When it drops below 10, it writes a blank just to clear that 10 position. So the units, tens, hundreds, thousands, except I only got up to 255, 256. Right, this is what I say, long-winded. There must be some clever algorithm. Otherwise, you'd have to write every single number up to like, I don't know, a trillion, billion, wherever you want to stop. 
and I like for example this number writes a zero if it's a 10, 20, 30 up to 250 so that's the 96 to 102 is the position of a zero in the ASCII chart so I've got to remember I'm down here on a library manager so if I go back up to that font so to count them all out uh, where is the zero here so that is position so 96 it starts to 102 that's a zero and from 102 to 108 is one so that's like a lookup table for the font now go back down Now, without a language uh, and a compiler to do all the hard work and no display to check my results because I, you know, I couldn't check the results if because the display did not know what to write or what, what to put where. So I tried some of these string functions. I think they're up here. Oh, they're all ticked. Uh, the string library but then my number isn't a string, it's a char, and I was like looking for a three, and in what position. Same as I did for getting data on the internet, I looked for certain characters, and the MP3 player. I looked for where was the MP3 on a, um, on a memory card, and then if I knew where the MP3 was, I knew the name was like up to 16 characters in front of it. So I could find an mp3, then I could find a string of characters for the name and display the name on the screen. But I couldn't do any of that on this display because it, you know, it doesn't understand, it doesn't have a language and this compiler doesn't understand that display. You have to spell everything out. So as I say, this is long-winded and I don't know the proper procedure because you're not going to, I'm trying to point at the screen, you're not going to write out every single number like this. But I had to do something to get this to get some numbers on this this, this display. Or even that, that small font counting from 0 to 255. So if you do know of a clever algorithm uh, and a short one uh, that you can you know, get rid of all this and put in your clever algorithm. But at the time of writing this I honestly couldn't couldn't figure it out. I tried, as I say, tried various strings. I've deleted most of the evidence now. Um, if I say draw image, if I come right down the bottom. So this is a long-winded approach to drawing numbers. It looks for your what number you've put in down below. If it's a not to nine, it's this is just the X. So X is position 10 or on a column 10. Then if it's over 10, moves to column 16. If it's over 100, moves to 22. But I've had to spell out every single number. So that's 0 to 9, and then the 20s to 29, 30, 39, so on and so forth, etc., etc., etc. So if I scroll down the bottom, just come off this. So there's all the big numbers. So if I show you here, so draw, should be able to hit control, spacebar, get the option, draw image, and it's worked. Sometimes it just puts random characters there. Put the bracket, shift, bracket. There you are, data, unsigned chart, image length. So how long is your image? So you could put 127, for example, to fill the screen. All those frames for the egg timer were 90 long. So 90, and then that function will put that smaller image in the middle of the screen. So if it was 90 long, comma, what next? Uh, data answer chart image height. I think there were 120, no. 64 
pi, comma, constant code or name. I know, yeah, just obviously the name. So I did have an egg. I've got an egg at the top. And I think that's it. So that's worked and not given me any errors because there is an egg um, font up the top or an egg image. If I put eggs, for example, see the red line because it doesn't exist, but there is an egg. And I was going to make an egg timer, I tried to put some switches on, ran out of memory, which is good because that would have been another day or two. So let's draw image. What was he? This right char. So for writing numbers, right. So what was that? What did I put? I forget. Just forgotten what I told you. So W R I. Is it control? Yeah, control spacebar. So I can write data or write char. Write char. Brackets. Data, unsigned char number. So I could literally write, I don't know, 88. Or 255. It will display numbers up to 255. But that's why we pay people like Microelectronica a couple of hundred dollars for compilers, and it does all this for us. I suppose the, the good thing about Arduinos, I've, I was looking for help when I couldn't get data on the display, looking for help on the internet, couldn't find any, but I had noticed um, Arduino. Uh, someone's already done the library and you can draw images, write text, write numbers, uh, don't have to worry about yeah, where the, where to put them, it's going to do it for you. This write char incident is just keeping that number in one place uh, and every time it writes a number it keeps the address in the same place, the column, unless the number gets over nine and it jumps up one column, then a third. If you don't keep the number in the same place, the memory for the display will automatically increment it across the screen. But when you're counting from naught to 255, you don't want the number coming across the screen, you want it to stay in one place. And a conventional compiler would do that for you uh, when it understands the display. So this is, it's a bit like bit banging, but it's all SPI. Uh, if you want to write the data, uh, SPI write, turn the data off, set the display, and because all my numbers are staying in the same place, I'm having to set the column uh, every time, otherwise it will start pushing it across the screen. As is common with all other displays, the memory automatically increments. So this is the breakout board I was using. This one's got the PIC 16F886. You can fit about seven pictures on this one. Uh, I then changed to that 258, whatever it is, uh, with 32K. And you can see you fit quite a large number of pictures. So hopefully you found this interesting, not too boring, but I do give all the information, uh, and there's very little information out there at the moment. Uh, except for people copying other people's libraries. Uh, I've written all this from scratch and you see it's raw SPI, no hidden libraries. I'll put the C file, of which there is only one file, no hidden files you have to include. Just one C file, I'll put it on Google Drive and put a link in the show more. So there shouldn't be any questions uh, yeah, needed to be asked. I'm, hopefully I've answered all the questions. Have a browse through the file, look at the different functions. So at the moment you could use this uh, if uh, like ADC, anything counting up to 255, uh, put the big fonts on it and just count from I don't know, 0 to 9 or whatever you want to do. Um, but as yeah, I'm impressed with the display given the size. I've uh, deleted all the big numbers, deleted the scrolling stuff, don't you see all that. Uh, that egg timer has got 25 pictures so you're seeing 25 pictures refreshed in what's that a second uh, it's, it's all to do with persistence of vision each frame is held there for between 40 and 50 milliseconds 
uh, and with the 25 frames look like a rotating egg timer. I'm impressed, you know. So you've seen the links uh, I put on earlier or showed earlier. Uh, that's the display. Um, I did try one of the example files on the internet. Uh, wired this to I2C and there's two jumpers on the back. You can see there's evidence of me having soldered wires on there and the thing got red hot so I'm not even sure the I2C data is actually right. A bit disappointing but anyway there you go you've got all the information now for uh, these SSD was it 1306 chips buried in this cable somewhere but look how thin this display is so wherever that chip is it's minute look how thin that is so it's a nice display yeah about £10 or so plus the VAT I've seen cheaper ones on eBay uh, about $3 actually I'm not sure how, how good they are but anyway that's how you get one of these going SPI and incidentally I was using the Microelectronica's programmer over there just hooked up to some wires up the back leave a thumbs up if you found this helpful or informative thank you very much